Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today I just wanted to get you thinking about target prioritization when you're engaging with uh, various weapon systems against the enemy fleet. So I think it's perfectly natural that when we start off as newer players in particular, I know I'm certainly guilty of it, you probably find it on this channel somewhere, is that when we see targets appear on radar, we usually want to engage the largest targets first because we identify them as the largest threats. So I'm talking heavy cruisers, we're talking battleships, they're going to put out more damage, they're going to be able to survive longer. We see them as the largest target in our eyes, and so we start to engage them with all different kinds of weapon systems. What I want you to consider thinking about is, are they always the greatest target based on the weapons that you have and the targets presented to you? So to help illustrate this point, on the screen at the moment is a heavy cruiser and a frigate. Now this is taken from one of the games from the 1v1 tournament that you can see in the playlist. I'll put a link down in the description below. But the heavy cruiser is equipped with missiles, 450mm cannons. It's also got Aurora and uh, Flak as point defense. And not too far behind it, running in parallel in the same formation, is a frigate. It has three blanket jammers and an interruption jammer. So I'd ask you to look at these two ships and think, which one would you shoot at? If you said the heavy cruiser, you wouldn't be wrong. And that's, I think, everyone's initial reaction, as I was saying at the introduction of this video. It's got VLA systems, it's got heavy guns, it's going to be able to damage your ships pretty quickly. But I would argue that in terms of target prioritization, taking out the smaller ship to its rear is actually more impactful to your game. Because that interruption jammer and those blanket jammers is basically allowing this heavy cruiser to sit in a bubble of electronic protection from Thunderheads and Hurricanes, noting that this is pretty modular missile update. And so your missiles aren't going to be effective. It's going to be harder to keep the tracks on scope, maintain your locks. And as a result, you're going to lose track of where the ship is. Your return cannons or rails aren't going to be effective. And so if you fire any Thunderheads and Hurricanes, they're likely going to miss, allowing the heavy cruiser to engage where it wants, when it wants. And so it's a lot easier to take out the frigate, which then peels off a layer of defenses from the heavy cruiser making it a lot easier then to engage with your missiles and your other weapon systems because then you're able to see where the enemy is, jam where they are, maintain your locks, and your missiles are going to be able to get through a little bit easier than they previously would. And so next time you play Nebulous Fleet Command, I challenge you just to take a tactical pause one to two seconds before you start allocating fire and just assess in which order should you be targeting ships. Should you be targeting small ships that are providing utility? Should you be targeting larger ships that are going to cause more issues later on? And then every couple minutes when you open the tactical map, just reassess your target prioritization. Am I still firing on targets that are causing me issues or are likely to cause me issues soon? And so there are a few other things that you should consider when you do this. For example, depending on the type of weapon that you have, it's not always effective to fire 450 millimeter cannons at a fast moving Corvette. So prioritization also then does come down from a fleet level down to a individual ship level. And so if I had a heavy cruiser with 450 millimeter cannons, well, I'm not gonna target a scout. I'm gonna target a light cruiser or another heavy cruiser. If I have a weapon system that's a little bit smaller or a little bit more effective at taking out the uh, smaller and lighter armored targets, such as the Corvettes and the frigates, well then which one should I be targeting? Should I be moving to different locations so that I am able to target these things? And then coordinating with team for target prioritization as well. Should I be drawing my team's attention to a high priority target? So in this scenario here with the heavy cruiser and the frigate, is there a weapon system on the other team that is more adept at taking out the frigate whilst I concentrate on the heavy cruiser? And if so, just remember that the game does give you some functions that allow you to coordinate with teams, such as the high priority message signal, as well as just the good old chat if you don't have voice comms. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on your approach to target prioritization. How do you make your decisions on what you're targeting with various weapon systems and with various fleets? And do you coordinate with your team members to uh, take out those ships? Or are you operating fairly independently, uh, but for a common goal of capturing the objectives? And like I would have mentioned at the beginning, or if I haven't, Nebulous Fleet Command is a highly situational game. With the amount of fleet compositions that can be brought, the amount of different players on a team, up to five on each team, the variety of maps that we have and the different game modes, it's hard to say do this, do that when it comes to prioritization. No one can really give a list of take out X, Y, then Z in that particular order because it doesn't exist. Every game that you play will require you to reassess the battlefield consistently and not only the greatest threats, but are enabling the greatest threats. And that's what we're looking at here with this frigate 
is that it's enabling the greatest threat to the battlefield being this heavy cruiser. So I hope you've found this thought provoking, but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and take care.